Hello, and welcome to this Analyst Angle. I'm your host, Shelley Kramer, Managing Director and Principal Analyst here at the Cube Research. And my guest today is 5'9 CTO and the head of AI, Jonathan Rosenberg. And we are going to talk today about the disruption that's happening in the contact center industry and how generative AI might play a role in helping to reimagine the contact center, but also we think, you know, what we're seeing is AI really going to completely reorient the business around the customer, which in my opinion is exactly where the focus should be. So I'm really excited about this conversation. Jonathan, welcome. It's so glad it's so good to have you. Great to be here, Michelle. Absolutely. So let's talk contact center. Yes. I think most people who actually use contact centers would admit that today's contact center experience is broken. And it's often built around what seems to make sense for the brand rather than serving the customer. And if you're listening and nodding, you're not alone. Um, I personally have more experiences than I can count where contact center interactions are frustrating and they're arduous and that you don't do much when you have an already upset or frustrated customer issue and, and you know, and this sent them to the contact center to begin with. and. And so you're dealing with somebody who ha isn't always having their best day, but when you extrapolate that out to the contact center employees who are trying to do what has to be one of the most difficult, yes. mentally and emotionally taxing job on the planet, I, in my opinion, it's clear that change needs to happen. And I have a feeling you might not disagree with me. I you. completely agree. I mean, you <laughs> see me nodding my head the whole time. Absolutely. Okay, exactly, exactly. And you know, the, the frustrating thing though, and maybe you experience this as well, you know, the more you know, the more difficult it is to wade through difficult interactions. And I have experiences like this when I understand what technology exists and I understand how seamless this process can be. And when I am in a situation where things are siloed or disconnected and I tell, can tell the agent, you know, simple things like, you know, being passed from person to person and being asked the same things over and over again. And as a, as a knowledgeable customer, that frustrates me even more because there's technology that exists to solve you know, for this. It can be better, but it's not. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So generative AI is changing these things. And, and you know, I, I think that... I'm looking forward to talking about how Gen AI is going to completely reimagine the contact center, but I think it's also going to power an entirely new customer experience, one that actually serves the needs of the customer in a personalized and efficient manner. But I think it's also going to really play a big role in terms of customer service, contact center agent satisfaction. So, so looking forward to this conversation. Jonathan. Let's step back and look at and talk about the contact center industry as a whole. What's changed over the course of the past handful of years? Yeah. Well, what's changed is the topic, of course, we're here to talk about, which is the arrival of generative AI. Right. And I, as an industry, we hope and I believe that we're finally at a place where we have the technology that's going to allow us to bridge together the customer expectations, Shelley, which you just talked about, right, right. with the reality of the CX experience. And what's ironic is if you look at the history of the contact center industry and in CX, we've been talking about wanting to do better for a long time. A for really a long, long time. time. And self-service yeah. and agents who understand and don't need to transfer you around. These are, these are not new ideas. These are not new problems. Right. So you have to ask yourself the question, like, well, why haven't we been able to solve them? What has been the problem? Um, and in many ways, not the only way for us, Part of it, but a big part of it is we've just lacked the technology that's allowed us to rapidly and cost effectively with high quality, like bridge that gap. And I think generative AI is finally the technology that's going to let us bridge that gap and deliver the CX experience show that people deserve and they're not getting. Well, I am, I, I am all for that. And, uh, you know, I, I think that part of how I see this is the contact center today is really kind of reactive instead of being proactive. Right. And I think as a customer, it's exciting to think about the fact that hopefully in the not too distant future, the, the you know, co companies that are smart enough to integrate generative AI solutions into their contact center, um, you know, looking I'm looking forward to better experiences. I'm, and, and there's nothing better really as a customer than having a problem. And, you know, I'm not having my best day when I reach out. I, nobody wakes up and thinks 
oh, I'm going to make myself a cup of coffee and I can't wait to talk to the contact center agent at XYZ brand, right? Yeah. Nobody thinks about that. However, when you do have an issue or a challenge or whatever, and you have a contact center experience and you have such an enjoyable, efficient experience, you walk away from that feeling wonderful. And I think that, I, I think customers very much want that, don't you? Absolutely. Now they remember it, right? Yeah. Because it's, today it's so much an exception to the rule. But when you get that, it's something you really, you maybe do look forward to. You know, yeah. there's a person I know who can help me and I'd like to be able to get them to help me again. That, that would be positive. Um, well, and you, rem you remember those interactions. I'll give you an example. I was talking, really, it's been about a year ago. I was talking with a contact center agent at my health insurance company. And I had a couple of claims, you know, doctor's visits that weren't covered, uh, that didn't take insurance. So I needed to figure out how to submit a claim. And that's just like, you know, I'm no dummy, but like, that's the last thing I want to figure out how to do yeah. is submit a claim. And I still remember the amazing experience with that agent and kind of walking me through, this is so easy, Shelly, like, it'll take you five minutes, you will over and done. Here's how you do it. You have any problems, call me directly. Like things like that make you feel like a human and make you walk away from the experience really feeling good about it. And, and I will say this for anybody listening who thinks that the solution, the best solution in the contact center is to just integrate chatbots. I'm here to tell you many times customers really hate that. Yeah. So please remember that. <laughs> they do. So, and, and I think to me that, you know, the whole chatbot comment comes from a lot of times, again, this is when you come into the situation and you're knowledgeable about technology solutions, you you understand very clearly what it is, what action it is you're trying to get to. And, you know, you have to futz around with chatbots for what seems like, a, you know, a very long period of time until you get to the point where you can actually deal with someone who can help solve the problem. So I feel to me, a cookie cutter solution is, oh, we've got chatbots, it's the best, but it's not the best. So I really love to talk, to see the industry moving beyond that and, and really, um, and, you know, d developing solutions that are going to be more proactive, not reactive. And so I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but the problem I would say, Shelley, is it's not that chatbots themselves are fundamentally the problem. It's that today's chatbots don't work well. Right. And the way I can you can think of this is like, you have to think of a chatbot as just a conversation that you're having, right? And right. Could that conversation go well or could it go not well? Well, today it doesn't go well. You're not able to get the answers you want. Universally. <laughs> right. That's the problem. But yeah. we can look forward. And this is where I think Jenny and I can help. We can envision building chatbots that honestly are fantastic. Right. They know everything about you. So you don't have to repeat anything. They can, you could take the conversation wherever you need it. They can instantly respond, provide you knowledge, information, like almost a super agent experience is possible, right? With chatbots, but it's not the ones we have today. Yeah. That's well, sign, sign me up for that one. Yeah, exactly. So I know people would love that. Yeah. Uh, because I think a lot of people like the idea of self-service being chat and text. It's right. just that today's experience is not delivering something they want and they exactly. know they're going to get better by going to an agent. And so that's what they try to do. Yeah, exactly. Well, I look forward to that. So let's talk a little bit about AI since that's kind of what we're here to dive into and, and in particular generative AI and, and what's your perspective um, on the role that Gen AI can play in the contact center and, and will it help us get it right this time? Yeah, uh, I believe it, right? I believe it. And again, it's you, you should be skeptical because as an industry, that we at CX industry and contact center industry has been saying that for a while, but hasn't yet delivered. In fact, if you look at it, like this is sort of our third pass at this. You know, originally contact center thought that IVR menus where you press one for sales and two for support, and you know, that was going to save people time and money and improve the experience. And it, and it kind of didn't. And then we had the the current generation of chat bots and voice bots. Again, some of them work okay. I don't want to say they're all terrible, but there's a lot of bad ones and often people still find they prefer talking to customer support. This time though, I think we've got the tech that's going to work. Um, and it's going to allow us to deliver self-service experiences that people love and prefer, as I was just talking about Shelly, that you'll actually want to use these tools because they're better. Um, and it isn't just that either. Like we're able to solve a bunch of other problems. So I'll, I'll point out one quick one, Shelly, but this one is, is really easy and we've made a lot of progress on this. And you talked about it which is when you call up someone and you get transferred to another agent or you have to call back, you have to repeat your story all over again. 
right? And everyone, everyone has this problem. They empathize with this issue that like, I call up and I talk to someone and I had to repeat myself over and over again. Why, why do you have to do that? And the reason is that in order for you not to do it, there has to be great notes about your interactions with the contact center right. stored in the case system so that when you get to the next agent in just a few seconds, they can catch up on what happened and know your story. Right. And generative AI is allowing us to do that. And that's one simple example of a great use case in the contact center that can make a difference. And it is today, um, we're seeing a lot of success with that one. Well, I think there's a reason that we talk about data being the new gold and actually contextual data being the new gold. And it's like, I mean, that's exactly what you're saying. And I can come into an experience where even if I'm transferred from one agent to another, that real time information, my history that's at their fingertips, the less times that I have to explain my challenge or my frustration or the fix that I'm looking for. I mean, that makes everybody happy, right? And Absolutely. so I think that all of that relevant information and then, and also a personalized experience, you know, and I, I think customers really crave that today, you know, feeling like you value me as a customer, you actually know who I am, you know what I've bought or what I'm doing or what my interactions are. Like all of that creates a general impression that I matter to you and that I'm valued as a customer. And I think that's, that's the kind of experiences that customers are looking for. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, this is another area where as an industry, there's been a lot of promises around personalization, hyper-personalization. Yeah. We've not really been able to deliver it. And now with generative AI, we have a tool where it's great at this. You know, we can feed it all of this contextual data, like you just outlined, like yeah. your history of past purchases, your transcript of your past interactions. Um, all that stuff can go in and it can be used by the generative AI to provide highly personalized bots. It can even inform the agent when you connect. So they know all this stuff ahead of time and don't have to go, well, let me look at your case history. I'll put you on hold while I read your story. Right. We, we can get rid of those things uh, with generative AI. I, I love it. I love it. You know, the reality of it is, it seems like we've talked for a very, very long time about the importance of putting the customer first and we now have the technology to actually do it. So let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> let's, let's... But do it cost effectively, right? That's yeah. been, that's been a core part of the problem is that a lot of these things sort of were possible, yeah. but at high cost. And that's what kept them out of mainstream contact centers. But, but this tech is now here at a good price point to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, Jonathan, I mentioned earlier how, you know, I personally dread any instance where I have to reach out to a contact center to solve a problem. And, and, and I will say, you know, you made the comment about um, self-service. I always want to go the self-service route. And I think today's consumers, especially, you know, savvy web users, I want to solve my problem myself so that I can quickly move on to something else. Um, but Sometimes that's not always possible. Sometimes the technology really isn't where it needs to be. But but I'm so mindful of the load that contact center ed agents play. And I think that for a variety of reasons, one, I'm a consumer and I use contact centers. Two, I cover this space. So I'm, you know, very aware of the the responsibility that contact center agents have in terms of customer retention, customer loyalty, customer satisfaction, all those things. I mean, this is a hugely important role, um, but it, and contact center agents are almost always dealing with customers who are not having their very best day. So it's a given that employee and agent churn is an issue. Um, and sometimes I think it's as much a, a case of poor agent experience, certainly from a technology experience, as it is the daily challenge and the grind of dealing with unhappy customers. How do you see Gen AI making things better for contact center agents and perhaps working to reduce some of that oh, yeah. you know, turnover and churn? Wow, it's a huge problem, like I said. I mean, contact center agent churn is this, this just an enormous number. Um, and it's for the reason you say it's frustrating, you deal with angry customers all day, it gets difficult. So how do we how do we address that? One is we can use generative AI to reduce the number of calls that come to them that are the source of a lot of this frustration. And a lot of it is angry and repetitive, right? The same silly issue over and over that customers call about and get connected to me and I have to solve over and over again from an unhappy customer. And if we can move that to self-service, that those things don't have to reach the agent, 
Yeah. We're going to help the agent. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to eliminate a lot of the mundane clickety clicks of gathering and copy pasting data and looking up and searching things and have you the generative AI can provide a, an assistive function for the agent that gives them the knowledge, the information, the tools that they need to do their job more effectively. You know, the agent focus on empathy and problem solving and, you know, and building a relationship, right? And that's what the ideal role is. That's, that's the end of the day where people really crave yeah. when they eventually connect with an agent is they want that human touch. So right. let the agent focus on that human touch as a, as a relationship manager for the brand. Yeah. And that, that I think will help a lot deal with the challenges we see in agent churn. Well, I think what you want as an end goal is you want customers remembering the interaction that I had a year ago with Derek yeah. at my health and, you know what I'm saying? I'm walking away from it going, man, that was awesome, you know? Yeah. And, and so I think that's, you know, these human and digital powered interactions play such an important role. And I think that, you know, when, when you talk about customer experience and when you talk about, um, you know, pre the brand and loyalty and revenue growth and profitability and and you know all of those things are tied to happy customers stay yes happy customers tell other people about why they love doing business with your company happy customers defend your company in situations where that might be required happy customers want to stay they want to buy more they want to do more so all of that really to me goes a long way of saying this is why you have to prioritize your contact center operations because they impact everything about your whole customer life cycle. And, and I think that's something that sometimes gets overlooked. Yeah. I mean, it's the front door to your brand in many yeah. ways, right? And it's an area where you can invest in improving the CX. And I think it's a, it's not that brands don't want that. Like no brand is going to say, I don't care about my customers. I don't want to invest. It's that they've not been able to afford it. They've not been able to afford the technologies or, yeah. that, that that allow them to deliver better CX, and now with this with Gen AI, so I'm hoping we can get over the hurdle on this, and we can give brands a tool they can afford and use to deliver a much better CX for their customers. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the statement that you made, the comment that you made, took me back to a moment early in my career. Um, I was I was in my late twenties, and I worked for a mid sized ad agency. And my boss was a master strategist and he was actually one of my first mentors. And um, he believed fervently in all things, customer service, the customer experience. And um, one of the things that he believed, and again, this is, you know, a long time ago, um, but that your receptionist in your company is the most important role that you have to fill because your receptionist back then um, was literally the front door to your company. So to have someone warm and engaging and gregarious and helpful and nurturing and like all of those things were so important. And he really believed that this, this hire was one of the most important hires you would ever make. And whatever you were paying your receptionist probably wasn't enough. And and just kind of took me back to that because you're right. We don't really have that so much anymore. Most of us aren't going physically into places all that often. Um, we're doing a lot of our uh, engagement online. And so it, it is the front door of your company, your contact center agent. So I love that analogy. Right. It's the human touch. It's what yeah. remains of the human touch. Because like you said, we don't have that receptionist and so many brands don't have a retail stores. Yeah. Is where people go anymore. Is it's, it's all moved online. Yeah. So contact center agents even more important. Yeah. So for contact center agents, much like, much like elsewhere in the workplace that we're seeing, AI is attractive for, you know, I mean, the the party line here, and, and I don't say that because I disbelieve it, but we talk about this so much. It's that, you know, generative AI can help reduce the mundane work that agents do and it create can create opportunities for agents to do more high value work. Uh, creates opportunities for upskilling of contact center teams and all of those things I think are very good things. Um, but in some circles, in some conversations, I hear talk that AI will eliminate contact center jobs. And quite honestly, that doesn't sound like a step forward, at least not for customers seeking best in class customer experiences. But I doubt that that really is how we see the evolution of this role of the contact center agent that's powered by Gen I. What are your thoughts on that front, yeah. Jonathan? I think you use the word that we all need to keep in mind here, which is evolution. Great. 
there is no doubt that this job is going to change. There's no doubt about that. And that's consistent how a lot of jobs evolve over the years as technology comes and goes. And the way I think about it is, is something I touched on on a previously in our conversation, Kelly, is I see their job uh, evolving to be a, um, uh, a relationship manager, right? That they're the representative of the brand to their consumers and their job is to help the organization close more business, grow their revenue by getting customers over the hurdle of buying, uh, when they're looking to transact business. And it's also building relationship with these customers to prevent churn, right? And these things are kind of things we often see in like sales type of roles. Um, and I, I see that that's where they're going. They're going to be brand ambassadors, relationship builders, Ellie, that, that help grow revenue and reduce churn. And I say that because that means these are roles that have value to a business, right? If you talk to any business owner today, they're going to say, you ask them, would you like to have more salespeople? Would you like to have more employees that can convert leads to deals and prevent churn? And everybody's going to say, yes, we want more of those. Yeah. Um, I think that's where this world is going over the years. And as it gets there, it becomes a valuable role and a different role than we have today and the evolution of what we have today. Once we've eliminated all this mundane drudgery, you know, password resets, my goodness gracious. So I like, why? Can we not have to call the Connex and our password reset anymore? I'd like to get past that. This is <laughs> role. Well, I think that, you know, to me, this evolution is a situation where the customer experience is that your contact center agents always know the customer yeah. and always welcome them back. You know, Hey, Shelly, how are you today? And they like, that would be such, it's so simple, but it would be such a game changer. And then to think about, you know, and when you think about more high value jobs and, you know, I'll step back and say, I've been covering the automation space and it, in yeah. all things, business process optimization for a very, very long time. And, and I remember when, you know, low code, no code offerings were, you know, the, the, buzzwords did you were and how they were the newest iteration of technology. And um, there was, of course, a lot of talk about at the time about how, you know, automation was going to replace jobs and everything else. And, and I remember I was in an event one time and I was talking with a couple of more junior level employees yeah. and, and, and about their jobs, about their roles. And they were talking about how they had been able to learn how to develop apps and things like that. And, and, to hear them talking about their evolution of their roles within their organizations, to see the light literally shining from their eyes, talking about things like, you know, I never thought I would have a job like this or that I would be able to do something like this. And not only am I able to build and create things, you know, without the help of IT, but I can become an internal ambassador here within the company. And I get the opportunity to teach other people how to do these things. And like, again, you can just see the joy coming from them. And, you know, work is work, yeah. right? It's, it, you know, we don't call it, let's go to fun, right? Let, work is work. But to be able to hear those stories and to be able to hear real world people talking about how a certain kind of technology has changed their lives, their roles, what they see as their future. I, to me, that's very fulfilling. And I see this happening in this instance as well. And the example you gave about, you know, sales assist and, you know, thinking about, I'm having a conversation with a contact center agent and they know that I've bought this, this, and this over the course of however many, however long I've done business with this company. And the reality of it is though, it may not even occur to me, I may not know that there's a new product or a SaaS solution or something else that might completely up-level the experience that I have with whatever it is, equipment that I already have, technology or whatever, you get my point. Yeah. But, but I think that, first of all, it's exciting as a customer to feel like knowledgeable agents can bring me ideas. And, and, you know, of course there's, you know, sometimes there's upselling that's not at all relevant and it's irritating, right. but I don't think that if they're able, if an agent is able to take your customer lifecycle data and be able to educate you about something or things that might really 
that you might not have thought about that might up level your experience. I think that's really exciting. And I think your point about, you know, this transitioning contact center agents from being, you know, sunk costs and it is many view them, which is not at all accurate, but really as adding to the revenue streams of the company, I think that's really exciting as well. It is very exciting. And it isn't just new product upsells either. Yeah. I mean, like, to give you some examples, like a huge amount of business today is an national they've lost by abandoned shopping carts with online products. Yeah. And imagine we're able we. to do a better job looking to meet all of us, right? Imagine <laughs> we're able to do a better job bringing in the agent to sort of help answer questions, offer alternatives, and to get people over the finish line to provide their purchases. Yeah. Right. And if you think about it, if we go back to our, you know, your receptionist or our retail analogy, back in the old days of, of all in person retail, that's why you had. Sales for people walking around the floor to encourage you, oh, that shirt looks great on you, or oh, you know, these boots are so popular. Like those, these little things like that, the human touch helps grow business. And we have lost that in the era of online. And, and, and it's my belief and my hope that we can now bring that back in an online digital world with this newly reimagined role for the comic center. Yeah, I love it. The human touch grows business. It does. I, I believe it with all of my heart. Absolutely. I think that that really that resonates with me very much as a consumer, as a business owner, so many things. So let's talk a little bit about data. <laughs> and, you know, in today's world, data is the lifeblood of every business. I don't care what it is you do and how big or small your company might be. And, you know, you're only as good as your data. So we talked a lot about the contact center being in the data business since its inception. Um, you know, I'm a data geek. I'm well aware of the value of contextual data. But I'd love to hear your thoughts and maybe a little bit deeper dive on contextual data and why it makes such a difference. Yeah. Yeah. So contextual data is, is in many ways a new idea. It birthed from generative AI, and it means something very specific. And what it means in the era of generative AI is it's all the information that you feed to the generative AI model in the prompt, right? And what we're now having with these very capable generative AI models is you can give them a ton of information, a ton of context about the conversation about the customer. So imagine a chatbot that when you, you know, you sign in, it's not just seeing, hello, I need help, and it doesn't know anything else. It's been fed all this information about you, Shelly. It's been given you know, your past purchases, transcripts and summaries of all your prior conversations. If you're an existing customer, you know, it gives you your, your most recent bills and your payments and status of your shipping orders. It knows all of that, all of that retrieved dynamically and programmatically in the beginning of the conversation, all of it fed to the generative AI. Along with knowledge, you know, what are the policies and procedures? What are the goals? What are the practices that the business wants this chatbot to follow? The same kind of thing you would provide a human agent, by the way, to, uh, in guiding how they respond to customers. Um, all that is contextual data, all of that. Right. And that's what delivers this hyper-personalized quality, like just get the job done for me kind of experience that we, we've been talking about on this call that we crave but have not been able to get. Right. And, the, and the only way to deliver these great experiences is this contextual data that's fed to the generative AI models. I like it. So we can't talk about data in my world without also talking about data security and data yeah. protection. And I know, having covered 5.9 for a very long time, that data has been a central part of the company's DNA really since inception. So talk with me a little bit about your approach to data security and data privacy and why that's such an important part of, of Five Nines value proposition overall. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing growing awareness and concern about this topic, yep. customers. Um, and this is an area where in the Connex industry, we've cared about this a lot. In fact, if we can we rewind time the contact center and contact center software platforms like cars were some of the first to handle things like credit card numbers. That is right. Hugely valuable identification information. And so to, to solve for these things, you need to build safeguards deep into your platform that protect some of the sensitive data to make sure it doesn't like accidentally get logged um, and, and made available to employees without your awareness. Like these are these are catastrophic problems that we want to avoid. And their capabilities that like five nine and others in the contact center space 
that have been building. And so we really feel, I feel the Connex Center industry as a whole is really well positioned to carry forward that legacy of safeguarding highly sensitive personal information as the scope of that information grows in this era of generative AI on and something we're investing in and, and have always been doing. Yeah. Well, that's the answer I wanted. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's the answer I wanted. Uh, you know, I mean, security is such a primary issue these days for very good reasons. So I think that's what customers are looking for too, is that, you know, the, the commitment to data privacy and data security from a brand is, is incredibly, incredibly important. So Jonathan, as we wrap the show, I would love for you to share with me your vision on what's ahead. Like, you know, what we've talked about here is all really exciting, but is it just talk or is this new customer experience thing going to really become a reality and not another talking point? And how close are we? Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. Listen, only time will tell. I'm a big believer in that. Right. Um, but I'll tell you, we're seeing good evidence that this reality, this, this vision that we've been discussing here, Shelly, on this, on this conversation, um, is going to be a reality. Um, one is we're seeing huge success with some of these early applications of generative AI in the contact center. Not these amazing fully featured chatbots. People are still building that. Um, and there's lots of work still on the technology to solve problems like hallucination that are real, uh, that we have to get a better handle on in order to deliver these experiences at scale. But there's tons of other applications uh, that we're, we're already seeing be highly successful. This after call summarization, where we automatically summarize the call, put it in the case notes, so you don't have to repeat your story to every agent. That thing has been a runaway hit. Yes. You know, of it, course it is. It's the well, worst part of every contact center experience. Exactly. Exactly. Runaway success with this product because it solves a real customer pain point yeah. that we've been talking about. It's and it's the generative AI has made this so easy to deploy, so cost effective. It's actually been the fastest going product in the history of five months. So so that's been great. And we're now beginning to see this technology show up in in bots that are able to answer questions and take stronger actions. And the success of this technology in the consumer space, right, with the success of products like ChatGPT itself, is an indicator that there is consumer demand, interest, willingness, and excitement around this technology. Yeah. And so there's good evidence that, okay, if it worked there, we can make it work in this uh, business context as well. Right. So between the early successes we've had with things like AI summaries and the great successes we've seen outside of the Connect Center with this technology, I'm feeling really optimistic that you know, we're not decades away from solving this problem with this stuff we're able to do today. And we're in striking distance of delivering some truly amazing self-service experiences. I love it. The reimagining of the contact center it, and the reality of it is, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's so exciting because it benefits everyone. It benefits the customers, it benefits contact center agents and the organizations that they work for. And, you know, I said this earlier, but happier, more satisfied customers, they're loyal, they stay around, they keep buying, they want to buy more, they recommend you to their friends, all of those things, you know, championing the brand. And so I love that. And I, and I also really, really look forward to the evolution of contact center agent jobs and how they can evolve into roles that, that help people navigate challenges and, and, you know, jobs that they can get up in the morning and be excited about doing right. And, and uh -huh. so I'm a fan. I think there's much to look forward to on this, uh, on this front, Jonathan. And so with that, we are going to wrap our show and wrap this conversation. Jonathan Rosenberg, 5.9 CTO and head of AI. Thank you so much for joining me today. I can promise you this will be the first of many conversations that we'll have as you continue to innovate and you and the team at 5.9 continue to innovate and, and we start to see some of these changes happening in the contact center. I can't wait. Neither can I, Shelly. Thank you so much today. Absolutely. Absolutely. For our viewing and listening audience, this is Shelly Kramer with the Cube Research signing off. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you again here next time.